Hey all, welcome to Small Catechism Tuesday. It's Pastor Earhart back with you. Uh, we're getting a, a day late because uh, yesterday someone gifted me with a lovely stomach bug, which kept me in bed all day. So here we are back uh, for the uh, Apostles' Creed second article. And uh, this article deals with uh, the second person of the Trinity, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So, second article. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. Now, this is, this is the first of three parts of the explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed. It deals with who is Jesus. The next part is going to talk about what he has done for us, and the third part uh, will be uh, what this means for us. So first of all, who is Jesus? He is true God and true man at the same time, not half and half, um, not uh, only appearing to be man, but he is truly and fully God and truly and fully man at the same time. How is he God? Well, he has begotten of his father from eternity. Now, this is a mystery for us. In all of our experience, fathers always precede sons. But in the divine economy of the Holy Trinity, God the Father and God the Son are both eternal and co-eternal with each other. There was never a time when the Son of God was not. The Son of God has always existed, always as the Son of God, uh, the Son of the Father. So eternally begotten of God the Father. John chapter 1 tells us of this mysterious and sublime relationship of the eternal Word of God, uh, the Son of the Father. So he is eternal God, true God, but also at the same time true man. And that happened in history, in time, as the eternal Son of God came into our time. And what's more, he also came into our flesh and blood by sharing in our humanity uh, through the Virgin Mary. God the Holy Spirit came to the Virgin Mary and through a uh, mysterious and we could say even a sacramental union, the eternal Son of God takes on human flesh. And so Jesus, from that time forward, from his conception until now, is truly and fully human, which means that he experiences everything we experience. He feels our same emotions. He uh, uh, encounters our own, our, our the same temptations that we encounter. And so Jesus knows exactly what it's like to be in this human body, in this human experience. He has experienced it all and suffered it all. And what's more, he's probably suffered more than most people will in their lives by his suffering and death. More on that next week. So Jesus is true God, begotten of his Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary. And so we can call him our Lord. Now, to call Jesus Lord does indeed recognize um, that he is king of creation and uh, king of, of his church, king of his kingdom in a special way. But also there is a special meaning of that word Lord. In the Old Testament, uh, God revealed his name, but uh, the, um, the Jews considered that name to be so holy that they wouldn't even read it or speak it when they came across it while they were reading. So instead of, of vocalizing the name of God, they would simply replace it with the name Lord, or with the word Lord. And so, as that convention carried into the New Testament, to say that Jesus Christ is Lord doesn't just mean that he is uh, in charge of a lot of things or has a lot of power, but that Jesus Christ is the same God as the Old Testament, the same God that visited Moses uh, from the burning bush, the same God that gave him the Ten Commandments, the same God that was active throughout all of the great acts of God in the Old Testament. So God, through his son Jesus Christ, 
is constantly involved in uh, delivering his people, um, giving them his gracious activity, and that greatest activity was accomplished for us when Jesus became flesh so that he could go to the cross. So who is Jesus? He is true God, he is true man, and he is my Lord. All right, so let's close with a catechism prayer from Pastor Buto. Now, Lord Jesus, my thoughts turn to your holy incarnation in which you look upon yourself, which you took upon yourself, a human nature in the womb of Mary, in order to be as I am, yet without sin, and thereby to suffer and die for my sins to take them away. What mystery, what wisdom, and what mercy! What a thing never heard of before, that God himself should take on what he has made, so that he may save what was made and has fallen. O oh, the infinite majesty of the Son, who in obedience to his Father, even though he was rich, became poor for my sake, that by his poverty I might have the riches of God. You, O eternal Son, have become man and taken my sins. Become sin for me, that I might become you in the righteousness of God. You, Lord, became man so that you might be under the curse of the law, hanging on a tree to redeem me from the curse of the law. Hear now, Lord Jesus, Son of God, my praise and thanks for what you have done by becoming man. Jesus Christ, Son of God, I call you Lord because you have become man to save me. Teach me that your being Lord is all about your work of saving me from my sins. Do not let me fear you as the one who condemns, but rejoice that you are the one whom the Father has sent to save me from my sins and make me his own. All praise and thanks be to you, O Son of God, for your obedience to the Father and your holy incarnation, by which you came and conquered all sin and death. I praise you and glorify you who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, folks, we'll see you back here next week. Until then, God bless and a blessed uh, Ash Wednesday and Lenten season to you all.